simply state that our government is fully prepared to support and facilitate the economy's reset. This budget provides every opportunity for our economy to race and capture the pace that it needs to uh, that it needs for a sustainable growth. 2021 is the year of many important milestones for our history. I mention a few of these. It is the 75th year of independence, 60 years of Goa's accession to India, 50 years of the 1971 India-Pakistan War. It will be the year of the 8th census of independent India. It will also be India's turn at the BRICS presidency, the year for our Chandrayaan-3 mission and the Haridwar Mahakumbh. Honourable Speaker, before I commence part A of the budget, I want to take a moment to acknowledge how isolating and distancing seemed like insurmountable challenges for a country like ours that has people coming together in times of crisis. It hurts us in many ways. It hurt us in many ways. I bow my head in respect to every citizen for the endurance shown in facing what was an undeniably a tough year for all our physical and mental well-being. Part A. In Part A, I wish to lay a vision for Atmanirbhar Bharat. Atmanirbhar Bharat or Atmanirbharta is not a new idea. Ancient India was largely self-reliant and equally a business epicenter of the world. Atmanirbhar Bharat is an expression of the 130 crore Indians who have full confidence in their capabilities and skills. We are already part of international groupings such as the G20 and the BRICS, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Fun Infrastructure and the International Solar Alliance are realities today due to India's efforts. The proposals in Part A will further strengthen the sankalp of nation first, doubling farmers' income, strong infrastructure, healthy India, good governance, opportunities for youth, education for all, women empowerment and inclusive development, among others. Additionally, also on the path to fast implementation are the 13 promises we had made in the budget of 2015-16, which were to materialize during the Amrit Mahotsab of 2022 on the 75th year of our independence. They too resonate with the vision of Atmanirbharta. The budget proposals for 21-22 rest on six pillars health and well-being, physical and financial capital and infrastructure, inclusive development for aspirational India, reinvigorating human capital, innovation and R&D, and a sixth minimum government and maximum governance. I now move to talking about the first pillar, health and well-being. Even at the outset, I would like to say that the investment on health infrastructure in this budget has increased substantially. Progressively, as institutions absorb more, we shall commit more. Taking a holistic approach to health, we focus on strengthening three areas, preventive, curative and well-being. Health systems. A new, new centrally sponsored scheme PM Atmanirbhar Swast Bharat Yojana will be launched with an outlay of about 64,180 crores over six years. This will develop capacities of primary, secondary and tertiary care health systems, strengthen existing national institutions and create new institutions to cater to detection and cure of new and emerging diseases. This will be in addition to the National Health Mission. The main interventions under the scheme are 
support for over 17,000 rural and 11,000 urban health and wellness centers, setting up integrated public health labs in all districts, and 30 and 3,382 block public health units in 11 states. Establishing criti critical care hospital blocks in 602 districts and 12 central institutions. Strengthening of National Centre for Disease Control, its five regional branches and 20 metropolitan health surveillance units. Expansion of the integrated health information portal to all states and UTs. to connect all public health labs operationalization of 17 new public health units and strengthening of 33 existing public health units at points of entry that is at 32 airports 11 seaports and 7 land crossings setting up of 15 health emergency operation centers and two mobile hospitals and setting up of a national institution for one health a regional research platform for who world health organization southeast asia region office nine bio safety level 3 laboratories and four regional national institutes for virology nutrition to strengthen nutritional content delivery outreach and outcome we will merge the supplementary nutrition program and the portion abhiyan and launch the mission portion 2.0 we talk an intensified strategy to improve nutritional outcomes across 112 aspirational districts universal coverage of water supply the world health organization has repeatedly stressed the importance of clean water sanitation and clean environment as a prerequisite to achieving universal health the jal jeevan mission urban will be launched it aims at universal water supply in all 4378 urban local bodies with 2.86 crores household tap connections as well as liquid waste management in 500 amrit cities it will be implemented over 5 years with an outlay of 2 lakh